Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this logo or a graphic, and it's pretty clean. If you zoom in, it's uh, pretty not pixelized, very bad. This is what he actually sent me at first, but he finally got around to sending this. So I've reduced it in size to make it only two inches big. I think it helps Corel trace. So we're not going to do anything. We can go up to bitmap and resample. It's already at 500. So we're just going to trace bitmap. I'm going to leave it as a color. I'm just going to go clip art. And it traces it pretty quick. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to take my new one out of the way. And then I'm going to take away all the color by right or left clicking. And then I'm going to left click in red. And a couple of things I noticed right off the bat is and he, he admitted that there were some double lines on top of stuff. And he is an engraver, so I'm going to do this like you would for an engraver. And if you see, this is kind of filled in here. So what we need to do first is probably select it all, and it's at 500 points. Let's turn it into a hairline, make it as thin as possible line, and then you can actually see things better. And then we do want some distinction 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 between this patch and this patch, but we don't need those extra lines. So I'm going to take my virtual segment delete key and just delete those extra lines. And you could quite possibly do this with the shape tool. Let's uh, select it all, go up to object group and ungroup it and see if this won't help us with the shape tool. If we can't, well, you can't really, because they're touching, you can't really distinguish those other lines. So we'll just go back to the virtual segment delete key and just delete these. You can actually see the thicker lines. And, and we're going to smart fill this, so this is really good enough. And we'll go ahead and do a couple. We'll do this one right up here. Same thing, virtual segment delete key. We could actually try... Let's set our nudge factor on like 2.5 inches. And let's take this outer line and nudge it. Take this inner line and nudge it. Now let's take this outer line and nudge it. And take this outer line and nudge it. What that did, it took away. Nope. So we need to nudge that back. Yeah, there's some really weird things going on. So let's just nudge them all back. That that would be a good way, but we're going to fix all that with the Smart Fill tool anyway. Let's take the virtual segment delete key and just delete these extra lines. If you can't get them, you see, I'm just trying to get that one line. Like there's a double thick line there, double thick line there. And make sure you get all of them. And what's going to happen is we're going to use a smart fill tool to kind of fix this. And in this case right here, what I would do is just to take the, sh the shape tool. And let's try to, and you can see there's some extra nodes there. Let's just delete them. And then let's grab, there's still a couple extra nodes. And then let's just grab that and join it. Now, I probably did change the shape a little bit, but I think it looks fine. We could actually try deleting these extra nodes. So we've got that cleaned up. Let's clean up the fork. And I'm pretty sure you don't want two colors here anyway. So let's just delete this inner line. And you can see it's, it's not solid lines. They're broken up. And this is one place you could probably use the shape tool is to select all that and hit delete. See, there's actually another set of lines there. Sometimes it might be easier to do this than using the virtual segment delete key. On this long line, we actually want just the center gone. Let's see if we can't. Let's just virtual segment delete it and see if it doesn't delete at all in one pass. Nope. It's just because it's broken up lines. Because this is another case that you could have used um, the shape tool. So let's say this is good and he's going to engrave it. Well, I would take the smart fill tool and let's put it on black. And let's 
fill that in with black and that one in with black. And what I would also do while I'm doing this, <clears throat> I'm gonna fill it in with black and then I'm gonna nudge it over. And it's up to you to figure out you know, which one you want what, where. Now these other parts we're gonna fill with gray. Let's go with a lighter gray. And then nudge it over. I nudged it down. So you might not even have to get rid of the double lines. This might be sufficient. Let's try to put a, a little gray to the outside of this. And then there are several things you could do. You could uh, fill in this circle. Well, you really can't. You could fill in the eyeball, the eye, with a gray. Just give a little bit of definition. Now, if I was going to, and I'm going to expect this before, make sure our double line, see our double lines hurt us a little bit here. Because that double line is in between there where the two that we repaired is black to white. So you'd probably want to, well, let's just make that to show the difference. Let's clean this up now. Let's get rid of this double line. And I'm going to try the shape tool again. Grab the shape tool. Yeah, it's good. Well, let's try this. This is what we need to do. We need to go to object and break the curve apart. Then when we hit just this line, it's just doing that, that line. So we should be able to grab it all and hit delete. Of course, that's not gonna work for me right now. So let's just take it and do it old school way. And you see that's a really thick line. That might not hurt us. That might be a good candidate for the shape tool. See, we can't move that out. See, there's, there's more than one double line there. So, but now we've really got that line selected. So we're just deleting that line. One more and it should be gone. There's actually another one. So let's try to select all that and hit delete. There we go, that worked. So now we're gonna do, I'm gonna fill this in with this gray and I'm gonna move it up. And then I'm gonna go back and fill it with black and move it up. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two I can actually move this by hand now. So let's look at that third one from the top where we've got some white in between the, the colors. And on the new one, we have nothing. Now I would take probably my smart fill tool or my smoothing tool if you have X7 and above. Well, set it pretty small and just take that black and just Smooth out places like that a little bit. Now, how I, how I would engrave this, and it would really, uh, you could do a couple of things. We could have made the head feathers gray. Let's just do that. Take the select tool, the shift tool, and select these outer feathers, and let's make it a gray. And then let's, let's get rid of this. And then let's grab the outer feathers and make them black. That would quite possibly engrave good. I know I put, let's do this. Let's fill that with black and move it over. Yeah, that would really look kind of look good. It would give the feathers a little distinction. And I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna suggest how I would engrave this. Well, what I did is the center ones have lost their, no, they really haven't. There we go. Yep, and that's what I need. you need to do. You need to get rid of this, this original line or extra line. Sorry this is taking so long, but there's only one way to do it correctly. Well, there's several ways you could do this as I've already showed. 
I'm going to call this good. We need one more line out of the way. And you could work on that a little bit more. Whoop. Let's just back up and, and fill this in with black. Now, the way I would, and that's going to look really good. The way I would engrave this, would I, I would, it'll actually work if you run this in one pass. But I uh, am a little bit of a stickler on stuff. And let's say, let's bring it back almost the regular size. And let's, let's get rid of all this stuff. That's locked somehow. Go to lock and unlock. Ah. All right, so let's make it a little bit smaller to fit on our page. The way I would engrave this, and I've shown this many, many times, I would take all the gray out of the picture. Let's, let's see, this thing's less than an inch tall. Let's just make it one inch tall. I would take all the gray out of the picture. Well, I'm gonna have to go taller than that. Let's make it uh, go back to two inches. I would take all the gray, and I must have actually jumped it. You could quite possibly grab all the gray. Nope, I'm grabbing black too, but you can always grab the black and bring it back. I'm making a mess of this. Let me start this over. Because I, this, is, this is the way I do it, and I do it all the time, and it really comes out quite a bit better. For some reason, I've still got that graze off a little bit. Probably easily fixed. Anyway, let's make our nudge factor three inches. That's right, because I made this thing quite a bit bigger. It's, it's over four inches tall. Let's make it our nudge factor five. Let's try to grab the gray and nudge it up. The gray and nudge it up. And then I would run this in the laser bed at whatever speed you normally, if he's doing on wood, there's one more gray we could run up. And you could actually probably leave that white. But run this at 100 power and 70 speed. And then move this out of the way. And bring this back in as long as you haven't moved your wood. And then run this at like 50 power, 50 speed. Or 50 speed, 70 speed, whatever. Just give it a light coat. And the reason I like to do that over just like running at one time altogether, because the laser will make the gray less engraved, but this way you have more control. And you can, you'll see it, especially since you did your black first. And then if it's not deep enough, run it again. Anyway, I hope that helped him a little bit. Thank you for watching.